I love English literature. I have a passion for it and I hope to follow it through um, in further education. It gives you the opportunity to learn skills that will apply for a lifetime. It confirms my belief that I can do well in this subject and going to do even better in college. Critical reading skills and analytical skills and writing skills have made me grow into a more mature and open-minded person. Hello, for those who are just uh, joining us, uh, I'd like to introduce again. So this is a live webinar organized by Cambridge International. So our full name is Cambridge Assessment International Education. And uh, this webinar is one of the professional development series. It will start at 10 sharp. Uh, 这次在线讲座呢，是由剑桥国际组织的呃一个公益性的讲座。啊，我们将邀请两位老师来分享他们的一个在线教学的经验。本次讲座将于十点钟准时开始，欢迎大家的参与。At Cambridge International, our programs are delivered by teachers in 160 countries around the world. To help you with each stage of your teaching journey, we offer a wide range of support. This support starts with your lesson planning. As well as syllabuses and specimen papers, there are schemes of work for many of our syllabuses. These suggest teaching sequences, activities for the classroom and links to help you find key learning resources. You can also use our teacher guides to help you with your planning. They include advice on teaching strategies, language learning support, and example lesson plans. In the classroom, you can rely on a great range of resources to help you and your learners. Our online learning area is home to Resource Plus, a collection of additional teaching and learning resources designed to help you deliver challenging topics and skills across some of our most popular syllabuses. Specialized guidance and materials to help you teach Cambridge Global Perspectives can also be found on our online learning area, as well as resources for your learners to use. Our handbooks and self-study training programs provide guidance on administering and marking coursework and speaking tests. We also work with a range of publishers to produce high-quality resources to support our syllabuses. Our support explains the standard of Cambridge exams and how to prepare your learners effectively. To help your learners understand how they will be tested in a subject and what they need to know, we produce subject-specific learner guides. Each guide includes exam advice and revision checklists. As well as past papers and mark schemes, we provide example candidate response booklets, which show how real candidates responded to past paper exam questions. Alongside each response, your learners can see the examiner's comments explaining where marks were given, how the response could have been improved, and common mistakes candidates make. Support and guidance for Cambridge exams officers, including training and step-by-step -step guides, can be found in the Cambridge exams officers guide on our website. You can learn a lot from your learners' results to improve your teaching practice and approach. Our principal examiner reports provide detailed feedback on learners' overall performance on each question. The reports give insight into common learner mistakes which you can explore in lessons. You can also find detailed information about your learners' exam performance in each area of the syllabus through results analysis. Results analysis is available for some of our most popular Cambridge IGCSE syllabuses. As a Cambridge teacher, you are part of our global education community. We have more than 40 online discussion forums where you can ask questions and get the latest information about your syllabus from other teachers and experienced examiners. You can also share your own resources with Cambridge teachers around the world. 
To find out more about the support we offer for schools, visit cambridgeinternational.org forward slash teachers. Hello, everyone. It's very exciting to see people are coming. Now we have uh, over 160 people in this, uh, in, in this course. And we are very happy to see all of you. So welcome, warmly welcome to everyone. Uh, this is a live webinar organized by Cambridge Assessment International Education. We are part of the University of Cambridge. And this online webinar is one of the professional development series aimed to support teachers who are teaching online. It will start at 10 a.m. sharp. So. Um, Thank you for your joining. I think it's really important to keep on learning and to never stop and always have a passion for learning. I study medicine in King's College London. The Cambridge International A-Level program is well recognized here and I knew it would provide a good basis for me to start uh, studying medicine here. It's not just the teacher hands us information and we go and read. We actually talk about it, discuss, argue, debate on certain matters so we fully understand what we're doing. I love English literature. I have a passion for it and I hope to follow it through um, in further education. skills that will apply for a lifetime. That confirms my belief that I can do well in this subject and going to do even better in college. Critical reading skills and analytical skills and writing skills have made me grow into a more mature and open-minded person. Good morning, everyone. So if you want to know more about Cambridge International, uh, we recommend that you follow our official WeChat account by scanning the uh, QR code that uh, is shown on the screen. So our uh, live webinar is going to start in one minute. We are very happy to see that uh, we now have more than 230 people joining us and welcome everyone. Thank you for your time. Um, so th this is a live webinar organized by Cambridge International. Uh, we are part of uh, at the University of Cambridge. Uh, I will give you a brief introduction after the uh, webinar starts. Okay. Good morning, everyone teachers, colleague, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. This is Julia Yu saying hello from uh, sunny Shanghai. If you can hear me clearly, would you please put the number six in the chat box? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, now we have uh, about 240 people uh, coming and uh, joining us. Thank you very much. And a little bit about myself. 
Uh, my name is Julia Yu, as I said just now. Uh, I am the Professional Development Manager of Cambridge International. And today we are going to have a live webinar, which is free of charge, provided by Cambridge International to teachers who are interested in teaching online. And welcome everyone again. Uh, and um, so two weeks ago, we successfully delivered two webinars on teaching online and uh, attracted an audience of 40,000. This is our second round of a seminar based on feedback collected after the webinars. So next, I'd like to introduce to you uh, what it, uh, is uh, Cambridge International and what we do. So. For those who are not familiar with the Cambridge International, we are part of the University of Cambridge and we are a sister organization at Cambridge English, as some of you are maybe familiar with. And we offer um, a pathway to support um, students from age 5 to 19. We are uh, a non-for-profit. Uh, for and to help students to uh, reach their uh, life, uh, to prepare them for life and for educational success. We also provide rich resources to support teachers and school leaders in their professional development with the aim to achieve better outcomes for students and improved school performance. You may uh, Stay, uh, so this is uh, what we do. So we provide the pathway from age uh, 5 to ni uh, 19. And we also provide uh, rich resources for teachers and uh, school leaders for their professional development. And if you want to uh, keep uh, in touch with us, you can scan, the, uh, follow our official WeChat. And also we have a channel in Yuku. So uh, for today's seminar uh, webinar, uh, to be fully engaged, we advise you to install OCC Talk app so that you can join the chat room. And also please change your alias in the chat room so that we can recognize you easily. If in any case the internet breakdown, please just re-enter the uh, live classroom. Uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding the content of the webinar, you can scan the uh, QR code below and we will collect all the questions and we'll answer it at the end of the uh, webinar. There will, will be a, a Q&A session at the end. Uh, since we have two speakers today, so in order to, uh, for us to be uh, clear, uh, who your question is raised to, would you please write uh, to who before the question you raise? So quickly to uh, introduce the agenda. So now I'm doing the opening remark. Uh, so Julia is my name again. And then uh, it will be followed by a pre presentation by our first speaker, Mr. Martin Crozier. And then uh, our second presentation by Mr. Donisha. After which we will have the Q&A uh, and in the end, we will uh, have a wrap up very quickly. So very likely we will finish this webinar uh, by 11 a.m. So, uh, so uh, this is uh, the uh, QR code for the Q&A. You can just um, uh, scan it in case you will have a question. So next we are going to have the first um, uh, speaker and also the first uh, presentation. Let me introduce to you our first speaker, Mr. Martin Cruz. Uh, so Martin has over 20 years experience of teaching mathematics at the highest level and is a trainer and also for many further math resources. His experience in online learning reaches back to 2009. He has set up Moodle platforms in his current and the previous school and has developed his courses to blend this with his teaching inside the classroom. His focus with blended learning is centered around assessment and the responsive teaching. So over to you, Martin. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for your 
Um, I just need to load in my PowerPoint uh, and then I can start. Thank you. So, so yes, I think mathematics is very important. Right and uh, the reason I want to do uh, is Online learning um, and bricks go from in the classroom. Um, so, so uh, something that I've thought about because I'm now at time. Um, uh, and, and you'll see example. Okay, so there are three main Set up one, I am I um, How I structure the engagement. Um, let's see. Is that any better? It was fine a moment ago. <laughs> Uh, it's much better now, Martin. Please go on. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, through this session, I'm going to look really at how we structure a learning, how 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 we structure a learning engagement, uh, and also how do we make the learning and the assessment visible to the learners. That's that's really quite important to me. So for me, the importance of blended learning fits in three main areas. Number one, it's to help our students to develop a much deeper understanding um, of the concepts that we're trying to get our students to understand. It also allows us um, to develop problem solving and critical thinking in our students. And I'll give some examples both online and uh, offline uh, that, that we can facilitate that. But also we want to be able to give students good feedback which is personalized to the student. It's given to them in a timely way and is also responsive to their needs. And then as a teacher, what do we do to make uh, the learning experience better for the student? So for me, they are the three reasons why a blended learning environment is, is, is a very, very, very positive experience for our learners and for our teachers as well, actually. So before we start, there, there are just a few things about using technology uh, and for blended learning that I think are absolutely critical. And it's it's the triple E framework and that the web link is at the bottom for you. But there are three main concepts that are really important when we are blending and using technology. So the first one is it has to enhance what we already do. So does it allow students to demonstrate a much deeper and sophisticated understanding of what they're trying to learn? Does the technology and the structure that we have, does it allow us to scaffold the learning better for the students so that they can understand those concepts more deeply? And finally, does it give a mechanism for students to demonstrate that understanding differently? So, for instance, instead of doing just um, a, a paper test, um, we have the options of doing Flipgrid videos, uh, podcasts of understanding, um, all sorts of things that maybe you wouldn't be able to do in the classroom. Um, the blended learning has to extend what we're doing. Does it give students the opportunity to learn outside of their typical school day? Uh, we know teenagers sometimes. Uh, don't learn so well in the mornings, for instance. Um, and by having a blended learning approach, it allows the students to structure their time better, maybe. Does the technology bridge uh, learning and experience and uh, help students with um, learning in their everyday life experiences? So for instance, there's quite a lot of news at the moment about how people are living. It's very nice that that can be incorporated into the learning. Uh, and does it enable students to build skills? OK, it's not just about the knowledge, it's about the skills that they can develop. So students may have to end up learning how to use platforms that maybe at university are going to be very useful for them. Now, this is, I think, the most one of the most important things, and it's this concept of engagement. 
Does the technology enable a student to focus on the task that they are doing? Does it allow students to motivate to start the learning process? And does it allow students to be, move from being a passive learner to an active learner? So we've got the ideas here of collaboration. Uh, we've got the ideas of actually just engaging in, in the learning process. So are the learning engagements that are created, are they enabling students to engage with that activity? Um, and they're learning online through a university. And um, one thing I really enjoy is the fact that all of the engagements are very, very interactive. So even though I'm a very mature learner, um, I still really enjoy the ability to be very active in, in the activities that we've done, rather than uh, just reading documents and things like that. OK, so. I've been using Moodle for quite a long time now, uh, and really, I want to share with you some of the ideas um, about how I've been setting up um, courses uh, and activities to enable students to um, make best use. So most of the things I've been doing have had this very simple structure to, to a, learning out, a learning engagement. So number one, we've been using videos to demonstrate a single concept. And what we found to be really, really important here is two things. Number one, the length of that video needs to be quite short. Any more than about 10 minutes, we have two issues. Um, issue number one is that um, it's very, very difficult, very, very difficult uh, sometimes to download large videos. That's just a technical thing. But from a pedagogical viewpoint, anything more than 10 minutes is a really long time for a learner to listen. OK, so, so no more than 10 minutes. Uh, and it should really focus on a single concept. So if you look on the right hand side here, I've got an example where actually I have three videos. OK, now the first two videos that I put up there uh, were to assess two linked but different concepts. And the third video was to enable students to bridge some of their prior knowledge and try to develop some um, uh, problem solving in, in themselves. So rather than me teaching them, this is how you do this, uh, it, it was designed to encourage students to um, develop that idea themselves. So they're being very critical about the information that they've got. Now, the second thing that's really important about the videos that we've found is I, re I, I, I genuinely believe that we know our students better than anybody else on this on this planet. So I believe that the videos should be made by a teacher, uh, the teacher of the students, because you can personalize the videos for your learners as well. Uh, and OK, that takes time. But I think the learning that the student gains out of that is is much, much, much higher um, than maybe a video that's just downloaded. So that's the first thing. We've got a learning engagement, which is focusing on uh, transmission of information, if you wish, to some extent. What we can then be looking at is the concept of questioning. How do we assess students understand and how do we know that students can improve? So I'll look at that in a minute, this concept of hinge questioning. Um, students also need, so that's that's what this uh, this would be doing here. This would be my hinge questioning. Um, students also need, particularly for a subject like mathematics, but it's true for all subjects, they need to practice the concept that you are trying to get the student to understand. So, so for, for us, we're allowing students the opportunity to do some questions. Uh, for us, a lot of that is out of our, uh, the books that they have. Um, because they need that practice. They, they need to develop the ideas and concepts themselves. But also students need to be able to consolidate uh, and clarify their understanding. So what is also very, very important is the ability for students to have face to face sessions with a teacher, with small groups um, to discuss concepts, uh, to ask questions uh, and make sure that they fully understand the concept that you're trying to put over. 
So let's start looking and breaking these, these four, four areas down. So in Moodle, uh, there are two things. Uh, it is possible to write multiple choice questions. Uh, it's possible to write lots of question types. Uh, and I'll show you another one a little bit later on. But multiple choice questions make very, very good hinge questions. Now, I think we need to make sure that when we ask a question that's multiple choice, we make sure that students can learn from where they've gone wrong as well. So the purpose of a hinge question is, is very simple. We ask a question, student responds. If the answer that the student has given is wrong, then there is some support for that student in improving and making sure that they, they, they understand and get the question right next time. So here, I purposefully got the answer wrong for this question. <laughs> but what it does is, by getting that question wrong, the student knows how to improve. So these questions take a very long time to create because you need, uh, with multiple choice, you need to make sure that the answers are generated from typical student error. So those of you who are teaching subjects that are already multiple choice, you have a beautiful opportunity of not just assessing their ability to answer questions, you've also got this wonderful opportunity of improving student understanding uh, remotely. Uh, you don't have to do that face to face. Now, one of the things I like about, about online platforms, and, and this is where the idea of enhancement uh, comes in to some extent is, when you're giving questions, let's say we've got 10 hinge questions, actually the question order can be randomized. So I could have 30 people sitting in a room in my classroom uh, or online doing this quiz and the questions for each student are different. Uh, they're in a different order. If you were, if you had the time, you could also actually create five different types of each question. So every student could have um, individualized uh, assessments, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, it has lots of advantages to that but the concepts that are being covered are, are the same for each student. Um, you can also change the order of the answers. So instead of A, B, C, D, these uh, can be in a different order. So, so again, that helps with some, some forms of assessment. Now, what my students have found they really like, ah, um, what's, um, sorry, somebody's asked a very important question, thank you. Um, students can look back at the quiz. Now, they can look back and they can look back at the feedback. This idea of permanency of response for me is really, really important. OK, a student might at the end of this quiz go, oh, I understand. But then. Two, three, four weeks later, one month, two months later, they de they, they've forgotten. Um, Moodle also has built in LaTeX. You can type maths into LaTeX into Moodle really easily, uh, which is great. It's a very useful skill uh, for those of you that are mathematicians out there to be able to do that. OK, so that's the concept of a hinge question. And, um, you know, I, I think that's a very, very useful tool for students to have. Also, students need to have the ability to practice, like I said. So students can go away. They can do their book work. They can upload their book work. Uh, as teachers, we can then assess that work and we can write comments to the student to help them improve. So again, this is another way of trying to develop uh, their, 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 um, their understanding of key concepts. This takes a little bit longer to do, of course. Um, some students like this because it's more familiar to what they're used to doing as well. Uh, and again, this is permanent uh, for the students. They can go back and look later at, at what they're doing. So this opportunity to practice is very important. But of course, students also need the opportunity to connect and clarify. So, so here is a little infogram about blended learning. And, and really, I like to split this diagram in half. The right hand side is all about online. What do we do online? The left hand side is what we do in real time. OK, so actually this can be in an online platform, such as uh, the ones listed here. I use Teams personally. Um, but it could equally be physically inside the classroom, okay? The, um, uh, 
a, a beautiful blended learning activity is where you spend, excuse me, where students spend their home time learning a concept and then in class time they are developing their problem solving and critical thinking, the what if this happens. Now the great thing as well with a lot of these online platforms is you can still differentiate your learning. You can, you can separate the groups out and when you have meetings with students, um, you can actually tailor what you want. So you might notice from a quiz that students have got a particular question wrong. And for that week, you can say, OK, you six students, you come and join me online. And then you can help help those students uh, with that. Uh, you can also have situations where students are leading the learning online. So you could get students to do presentations teaching uh, a particular topic or reinforcing or reviewing a topic. So there's lots of things we can do there. But the key thing is small groups. OK, otherwise uh, students stop being uh, active and they start being passive uh, and they just listen and they don't involve themselves in the learning. That's quite important. So I also use something called H5P. Now, this works outside of Moodle as well. Um, you can search for it and it allows you to make interaction. So I've been using this to mix the concept of videos uh, demonstrating a single concept um, with the hinge questioning or interactive activities built in. So I have a very small video that I just want to show you um, about this, uh, just so you can see what I mean. It's one of those things that, that can't be static. So, so let me just load up the video and you'll see what I mean. OK, here we go. So the reason this is not a statistic is because it contains a population parameter in its calculation. So students can now click and they can drag and drop what they think their statistics are into the right places. So we are testing a little micro concept about what a statistic actually is uh, while we do this. And again, students, once they've done it, they can check, make sure they're happy, and then move on. OK. Oh, I need to get out of the video. End. There we go. OK. Oh, that's gone back to the beginning. Let me just put that back. So that is an opportunity where, again, surprisingly, that's not that difficult to set up. Uh, it takes a bit of practice. But what it's allowed the student to do is to have this idea of visible learning. They, they have learned a concept about what a sample is, and they've been able to assess that pretty much straight away. So that student has now gone away going, aha, yes, I understand what a statistic is. So that learning engagement has been quite successful. Um, and, and again, H5P is very intuitive and it allows students to engage much more and be very, very active in their learning. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, listening to some of the ideas uh, that I have surrounding blended learning and also uh, some of the activities and structures that I've put in place to help help my learners learn in a way that I'd like them to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much for uh, giving us uh, your valuable experience in using Moodle and some other uh, tools to make your uh, classes blended. And I'm very impressed to see how the uh, tools can be used. And now, uh, would you please take a little break? And uh, we will, while we are doing the second uh, uh, presentation. Uh, you can prepare for the questions. Just a word uh, about the questions. Uh, due to the uh, great um, amount of information coming from the chat box, would you please raise your uh, questions uh, via the link or the QR code shared by my colleagues in the chat box? And that will make it easier for us to sort your questions out and we will be able to answer the top three or four questions as uh, much uh, as we can. 
And uh, next, I would like to introduce our second speaker. And for those who are just joining, I'd like to introduce that uh, we are now having a live web uh, webinar organized by Cambridge International. We will share two cases on online teaching, and we just finished the first one. And our uh, next one will uh, start in a minute. And the next one will be done by um, Mr. Donny Xia. Donny is a Cambridge trainer in mathematics and physics. In the past four years, Donny has been testing on how live streaming teaching can be used to help students in different occasions. Donny will introduce to us how to use live streaming tools in his teaching. So over to you, Donny. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, but may I show my, uh, may I use my, uh, yes, screen share. Can everyone hear me? Let me see. Can yes, great. Is my I hope my voice is clear. Well, my um, thank you, Julia, for a warm welcome to me, and thank you, Martin, for a fabulous presentation before me. Well, I uh, my name is Donny. Uh, uh, my presentation today will be on live streaming tools, but actually I do not want, I want this become a, a, well, a teaching session. I want to share a little bit about my experience and what I believe in teaching as well. So I hope you will find it useful. Uh, what about myself? Like Julia said, I, I, have, I have quite a lot of experience in online teaching. Well, is, is, well this uh, situation of coronavirus here is, is actually a bonus for me because I, I can utilize all my experience in, uh, for teaching to my kids. Uh, I've been teaching chemistry and math uh, for many students from various schools and countries. And I'm, well, that's probably interesting. Not a lot of teachers here are familiar with that. I'm a really, really online class uploader. So I'm going to introduce that in a moment. How do I use uh, the Bilibili uh, software to help me record my video and do the online streaming classes. Okay, well, why I chose online class four years ago or, or five years ago? Well, because I believe I read a book about individualized learning and teaching uh, quite a long time ago. And I, I personally believe that the future style of learning and teaching is about, about online class. Uh, for example, we have, uh, I utilize Coursera, uh, Khan, uh, Khan Academy. I'm sorry, my handwriting is really bad. Or, or uh, I, I really use that and uh, um, I, I do recommend those <clears throat> online classes or online platform for my students, Coursera, especially for my uh, very uh, top kids. They want to learn more than or super curriculum materials. For example, they want to learn uh, calculus by themselves, like differential equations or, or linear algebra, which is important for 9231. Well, the, it, it's also for us because we, we are not trying to cultivate the the student who actually aim for the college application. College application is just a start. We need to cultivate a student with lifelong learning progress. Therefore, in the future, when they do not have a teacher in front of them, how do they learn? They learn by watch, by observe, by, uh, by reading the books. So I think online classes cater to the future style of learning and teaching. And the secondly, well, if we do have online classes and record it somewhere, we can easily address students' individual needs because if they miss a class or if they have question for a certain topic, which you, uh, we, we cannot afford to teach in time-wise because I know Every teacher is very busy, and when, during the review, some student might say, "Well, um, Tony, like I, I have a question about about um, let's say electro electrolysis. 
So what do I do? I just simply give them a link. Well, that's my video clip on the electrolysis. And then you can, they can just view that and raise up questions if they still have. And what are the, some benefits for the teachers? I do believe online classes and video, uh, uh, sorry, video clipped, uh, recorded classes are, are, are good for teachers as well, because first of all, there is a teaching approach of flipped learning. Well, um, the reason why I, I believe many teachers never tried or they have tried uh, is because they do not have a proper uh, videos or resources for the flip learning. And if we record our own video, then we can easily use it for our future flip learning program or class activity. And the second is, well, which I always do is I'm going to listen to my video record again and I see, oh, at this place, I might need to slow down a bit. Oh, at that place, I, I, I can actually use another approach. Well, the, actually, the good way well, it, for improving teaching is not about your HOD or your supervisor evaluating you. It's actually about how do you evaluate you? What do you think about your teaching? Therefore, with these advantages, well, I, I chose to, to do online classes. Well, so how do we prepare for that? Well, I think the first thing for the online teaching is the, the slides we need to be clear, we need to be simple, and we need to be straightforward. There's nothing else. We do not need to put too much information on the slides because we want the students, the learners, to focus whatever they need to. Uh, well, I'm not doing an advertisement for Wacom, but uh, this is the writing board or, or tablet I used for about uh, five years and it is quite good in quality. And therefore, if you are considering uh, to buy a, a writing board or tablet, you can, you can actually buy Wacom and uh, uh, it is quite good. And of course, if you have iPad, you can, you can buy iPad pencils and that's really nice as well, equivalent. Um, I generally just use my Microsoft PowerPoint and I do not use other fancy way of sharing my screen. Uh, it's just good enough because in, in PowerPoint, you can switch your markers color very easily, for example, like that. Well, the one big thing I want to talk about is uh, about formative assessment. What about formative assessment? Is because if we are using live streaming or video record to teach our student, there is one disadvantage is engagement. I, I understand it clearly. Well, there are other ways of, uh, I'm going to say a little bit more about that in the, uh, in the coming slides, but for here, I just want to emphasize that for the formative assessment we gave to the student. Well, this is irrelevant. We are using online teaching or we are teaching in our daily life. Do we gave more of the same question? Means oh, I give them an integration question. Do I just give them uh, more of the same? For example, I, I can test them on, on integration of e to the x uh, sine x dx. Or, I mean, I can just give them well, e to the power of x cosine x dx. Well, these are just more of the same. But, like, yes, of course, we could give them more of the same question, but what do we really need to think about is higher order thinking. What, like, from, from stage one or stage A, well, we, we do, okay, well, let's, let's look at uh, 1 over x natural log of x dx. Well, that is an easier question. Well, I, I can only use math as an example. I'm sorry for those who might not be able to understand. But the, the point is, you, you, can, you, can, you can actually increase the difficulty of the question. And thus, we can use smaller or, or less 
amount of question to test or to assess students' understanding. And that's one thing I always emphasize uh, to my colleague or, or remind to myself when I give them formative assessment, do I ask more of the same or higher order thinking? It depends on what is your goal. And the last one is about feedback. Well, another question is about uh, online or, or streaming video is how do you give student feedback? Well, it needs to be prompt and effective. It's always true, but how do we do that? I usually do what I usually uh, finish my video and wait a little bit. I say, okay, now is your time to raise up question. And I will wait for one minute, and I will wait for them to post question um, on, on the chatting room. And then if anything that is really uh, emergent, I am going to I'm going to explain what the question is in the at the last of my online streaming class. And for the homework or the formative assessment, what I am going to do is I am going to take a, a look at their homework and actually redo some questions. They are no, or they have common question they do not know how to say or how to do, or they have some procedural uh, mistakes. For example, they have to do something, but they omit or ignored. That's what I'm going to say about preparation. And uh, this is the uh, Wacom table aid or writing board. I'm using it right now. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a good one. I'm not doing advertisement for it, but yes, it's cheap, affordable, and uh, lasts long. I really want to emphasize here about video record. Well, I'm going to tell you the reason in a bit, but I do recommend you to record your video, just to record the screen. How do you do that? Um, teachers might have concern about technical problems. It always happens. For example, uh, the internet connections. My, my, uh, I have a lot of problem with my writing pen because sometimes it just does not work for me. Sometimes your, my slide does not go through properly. So the first rule of thumb is stay calm. Uh, more than 20%, so one in five online teaching, I encounter problems. Uh, I got pretty lucky. This is my other 80% of the chance. I do not encounter any problems. But one in five, I do encounter problems. Uh, generally speaking, we a restart would resolve any problems. If it doesn't work, restart it again. I know this is frustrating, but uh, just stay calm and uh, say to the student, I'm sorry, there is something wrong with, with my laptop. I might need to restart and just restart. And then the, usually the problem will go away. If it doesn't, wait a minute, like one or two minutes if it's internet connection because they are fluctuating in their internet data, so it might go away. Another thing is I I always like we're in a classroom setting, we like we do go to the class five minutes before the class uh, the, the lesson starts. So this is all the same with online classroom. You we go five minutes earlier, we do what? We testing the audio, we testing the video if, if you have. I do not generally use video because it, it will cause more troubles. But if you do use video, you can test your video and you can test your writing board. Um, another thing is, there, I, I, you, you, we all know that we, we're going to, like, sometimes some advertisement on our um, right corner, right bottom corner will pop up. Or if you have uh, if you have QQ, WeChat, Skype uh, open up, there will be messages, and sometimes the you know it's quite distracting for the student. 
to see our uh, messages. And sometimes it's quite annoying. Therefore, my suggestion is we close irrelevant software. And the last is to be prepared. There are always questions, always technical problems, always something unexpected, just like what Martin encountered. The, uh, the internet connection at first was not very clear. Therefore, we just be prepared. And if the students say, OK, don't you have a problem? Are you sh this is unclear or this is hiding somewhere. Uh, some, and it came to me that some software actually does not show the full screen. So if I wrote somewhere over here, then the student cannot see. So the student will say, oh, I can't see what you, what you wrote here. So yes, it always happened. So we just need to be prepared for the technical problem. It is really common. It's not just for you, even for me. I am doing a lot. Uh, I have a lot of experience in, in online teaching. OK. That's the reason why I ask you to record the video. Because we, need, we might need to change of the mindset when we are doing the online streaming teaching. In the traditional classroom, we have engagement, we have discussion, we have instantaneous assessment and feedback. We can call the student, what do you think about this? Well, if the student stare at you, say nothing, and then we know, OK, maybe we need to redo that. Well, that's a sort, that's a, a kind of formative assessment. And we do have learning from the teachers. Well, students are learning, well, and each other. Of course, I can't really forget about that. Uh, that's really common in traditional classroom teaching. But in online teaching, we, it is quite challenging for us to, to actually call for a student because we, uh, the other student might just help him by giving them the answer. And uh, you can't really uh, look at the student, look at into their eyes to see, oh, does the student really understand or not? We don't have those facial expressions, gestures, or even to check their, their notebook is quite challenging. Then what do we do? We can use objective-oriented teaching. I call it objective-oriented teaching, or, or it's just called, simply called goal-oriented teaching. What do I do? Well, I check their homework. I gave out their homework, formative assessment. And then I do check them one by one. What is teaching and learning? Well, teaching and learning focus on the, on the learning. Well, the learning is more important well, than teaching. Well, I'm sorry, this might be controversial, but if the student learned without teaching or even without discussion, are we successful? Yes, we are. Because we are facilitators, we are teachers, we are also the facilitator of learning. This is the center of the classroom. Therefore, if I see in their homework to say that, oh, this student gets the objective one, I oh, the student know about integration by part. The student know how to use integration by part in complex problem, and the student knows how to substitute the upper and lower limits into integration by part. Are we successful? Yes. So I, I do use formative assessment. I do use homework and delayed feedback to determine their attendance. Do I require students to take my session? Yes, I do. But it is just, it, I, I believe you all know that there are, there, are, there are many students who actually be there opening the software but not paying attention. But what do we do for our attendance? We use formative assessment. And we do have decentralized learning by discussion, by watching videos from other platform. I mentioned Khan Academy uh, or other uh, Coursera open platforms. And uh, well, I might 
run a little bit more time. One key feature I'm using this is because this has a record tab here. Because we, when we are, well, this is not only for recording your online streaming class. I can use this to record this class, although I'm not using Billy Billy. Well, why we, uh, I record many of my lessons, my teachings in MP4 format, and then I post it on the, uh, on the uh, Billy Billy online platform so that my student can see in their, in their future and they can review. Therefore, I do recommend you this software. This is completely free. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to, to, to turn on the online streaming to record anything. You just say record and it will record your screen. It's just very, very uh, easy tool to use. And it can also record your, your camera if you want. You just click on this and you can review your screen and camera. And uh, thank you very much for your listen and uh, for your time. I hope this is useful. If you have any questions, please just scan the QR code and you can, uh, we will see that in a moment. Thank you very much. Um, I will okay. end this. Thank you very much, Donny, for your presentation. And I'm really impressed to hear that uh, the online teaching, the video in uh, particular, can be uh, evidence for teachers to reflect on their teaching and it can be a perfect tool for professional development. And it's really helpful to know. And also, I think you mentioned several very important points here that uh, which includes uh, uh, teaching online is not just uh, copying the face-to-face -face classroom in the online virtual classroom. It's uh, more of a change of a mindset. Okay, we will get back to Donny's pre presentation in a while. And uh, now we are going to uh, uh, to the Q and A session. So uh, everyone, uh, thank you very much for your time and for staying with us. Now we have uh, more than 619 people uh, online at the same time. Next, we will uh, have the questions raised to uh, Mr. Martin Cruzier and my, my colleague Stella is helping with the screen and we will be able to see the questions you know, in a minute. And uh, taking this time, uh, Donny will, uh, so you, uh, if you have any questions to Donny's uh, presentation, you can also raise it uh, via the link and also the QR code shared in the uh, chat box. And we will try to answer as many questions as possible, but due to time limits, we may not be able to ask, answer all of them. And uh, just uh, to uh, repeat again, this is a, a, an online a live uh, webinar organized by Cambridge International. If you are not very familiar with Cambridge International, uh, would you please uh, follow our official WeChat account and we will share the uh, QR code uh, in a moment. So as you can see, my colleague Stella is trying very hard to share. So uh, here comes the first question and uh, over to Martin to answer the questions. Oh, okay, so um, how to create Moodle. So Moodle is a, quite a large learning management system. Um, so um, this is something that a whole school needs to set up, have the server space and things like that. So again, I use Moodle um, as a long-term uh, blended learning platform. Not, not, not something that um, we can use instantly. Um, making videos with interactive questions. Now, what I'm using to do that with is a program, uh, a website called H5P. Now, that's built into Moodle, and other learning platforms also have that built into them. Um, but you can also go to the h5p.com website and register there, and you can take any video 
uh, through that website and you can add your own interactive questions. Uh, and again, the user interface, it guides you through really nicely about how to set them up. Takes a bit of practice, takes a little bit of getting things wrong, but hey, that's how we learn, isn't it? Um, but um, but yeah, so H5P is, is a good way of doing that. Thank you, good question. How to prepare for online teaching more efficiently? Uh, right, okay, so this one links to the, the time it takes to, to plan and prepare. So I talked about these hinge questions. They take a long time to prepare. Um, however, the time it then takes to feed back to students um, is, is much, much, much more efficient. So it comes down to the concept of planning um, the assessments that you want to do and what you're actually trying to assess. Um, but I think preparing well for online teaching, uh, the activities that you want them to do, does take a lot longer uh, than it would do in a class scenario. Um, but on the other side, um, it can streamline uh, some, efficient, uh, some efficiency in, in feedback. Yeah, so this ties into the previous question as well. So, so one hour of prep for one hour of lesson time. Uh, it depends how you define lesson time. Um, so for me, one student may spend 25 minutes on the engagements that we give them. Another student might spend an hour and a half. So it doesn't really work like that in terms of lesson time. Um, the prep varies, honestly, depending on the topic and the concept that you want to do. Sometimes I spend maybe 45 minutes. Sometimes I spend three hours prepping. Um, but yeah, that just varies from, from topic to topic. Yeah. Uh, so I guess this is the uh, end of our uh, notice uh, uh, questions. Now next, uh, let's uh, go to the questions for Don Donnie. I remember the last last question is for both of the presenters. If Donnie would like to answer that question too, you are also welcome to answer it. So over to Donnie. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, can everyone hear me? I, I hope I hope everyone can hear me. Um, well, the first question is about how do I make sure that all of my students participate in my class? Okay, so uh, there I, I want to take some time on this question because uh, not only me, my school also agree on this policy. We we are not taking attendance about video recording or the online streaming class because I will post the video record of the online streaming class anyway onto the Bilibili or onto any other soft, uh, online platform we are using. What I, how do I make sure that everyone attend is by my uh, formative assessment. I am checking their homework. Do you actually master the skill required into this session. If I am teaching integration, I'm going to say, well, do you know basic integration techniques? Can you do the different, uh, can you use different techniques to integrate? And can you use, can you substitute the lower and upper limit into the integration and calculate the area? So we are changing the mindset by, you are required to attend. Two, you are, I am assessing your skill. If your skill is ready, then I, no matter if you attend it or not, it doesn't really matter. And the second question about income, I, I do not get paid from Bilibili, so I'm not making sure the income from Bilibili, there is nothing money between, I and, between Bilibili and me. Okay, yes, the, this is about what I, I just talked about as well, the real attendancy. We, we are not looking at attendance in, in, the, in the attendance in the uh, video clip or attend in the online streaming classroom, but we are doing the attendance in their formative assessment. Can you do it? That's the key. It's not about if you look at it, 
or if you watch it, it's about can you do it? May I have the next question, please? Or yes, okay. So uh, the proportion for well, I guess for a teacher, well, often for a one-hour lesson time, I will teach twenty-five to thirty minutes if in a usual class setting. But in the online, there is no discussion possible or feasible. Therefore, I will take my time for an hour of lesson. I will use about 45 minutes to teach and go over the examples in quite detailed manner. One key difference is about uh, uh, from online teaching and uh, daily to daily classroom teaching is I will do my example really, really slow in a really clear step to benefit for all of the students. So I might need to have uh, about 45 minutes to prepare for one session. And I also, yes. Okay, well, that's a great question to ask. How do I prevent my student to collaborate or copy? Well, uh, that cannot, I could not. The uh, easy answer is no, I cannot. But the problem is, this question is the same with when we do our like daily to daily class settings. We cannot prevent a student collaborate or copy from each other as well. It's, there's nothing from, and I do, and I do really want to say that I believe my students. Um, for my perspective, my expectation of them is I'm going to set off the owner code really clearly at the beginning of my class. Okay, so you do not copy in the exam, in the homework, in the product, but you can collaborate. That's okay. I encourage you to collaborate, but you can't copy. But the problem is if you do get caught by me, that's going to be a problem. Therefore, I do not prevent. I trust them, and usually they would not. That's what I can say. But yes, I know this is different from teacher to teacher, school to school, but that's how I would deal with that. Okay, I think that this, uh, due to a time limit, uh, this is the end of uh, they are uh, queuing a session and almost the end of our uh, uh, webinar. So uh, now uh, we have about uh, 650 uh, and two uh, participants in this uh, webinar. And thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, as uh, both of the presenters uh, mentioned, I think uh, what we are uh, very focused on at the moment is technology, but I think uh, technology is just uh, uh, technology itself. So, um, and what we should pay attention to as well is how we make use of uh, it. And uh, so the key is that uh, how we can make uh, use of the advantages of uh, technology and to achieve our teaching and learning goals. And um, sorry, I don't think uh, I'm uh, opening my PPT to the end of uh, the uh, uh, of my PPT. So um, we really appreciate your attendance and also uh, your participation. And we thank you for your contribution uh, by raising a lot of uh, valuable questions. Now, this is almost the end of our uh, 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 live webinar. And thank you uh, for your time. So just before we finish this uh, webinar, would you please finish the feedback survey to help us to improve our work? And you may also have noticed that we have set up a PD series here in CC Talk. It is recommended that you subscribe to this course uh, uh, to re receive updated information. And also you can uh, uh, follow our official 
uh, WeChat as an account so that you will receive the most updated information. We provide uh, rich resources to support our uh, teachers and school leaders. And uh, thank you again for your time. Uh, Julia here in, Ch uh, in Shanghai saying goodbye to everyone. Uh, see you next time and look forward to seeing you in our next event.